The first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is change the tyre. My thinking being, while I'm messing about doing the tyre, I might damage the new disc if I change that first. So these are the ones I got. Again, recommended by uh, the community on Facebook. Uh, what are they called? Kenda Crusade Sport. Uh, definitely look a bit more sort of off-road orientated. I mean, they're not full-on mountain bike tyres by any means, but they're a lot better than the almost slick ones. Like I say, these are brilliant on the road. If you're on the road, most of the time, I wouldn't bother changing them. But um, we were on a, a gravel path the other day and it absolutely poured down the rain and we were sliding all over the place on those. So, uh, yeah, time for a bit of a change there. I've never changed such a fat, fat tire before. So, uh, I don't know if they're easier or harder. We shall see. Okay, Dougie, so all the air's out now. Oh, look at that, don't even need tire levers. Oh, I'm, I'm liking this. Look at that, easy peasy. What a doddle. Oh, I'm very chuffed with that. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some tire slime in this tube. Um, if you've not seen that before, it's this is green goo put in the inner tube. And if you get a puncture, it magically seals up the hole and you don't even know you've had a puncture. So this is the stuff. Um, that. Uh, used to use it when I used to commute to work. And I, I lived in Cambridge and it was like banging up and down curbs and there was just rubbish in the, the side of the road. It was brilliant. They reckon it lasts about two years this stuff but I think on one occasion I had about six or seven punches. Didn't even know about it. Brilliant stuff. Who do with the lid? Take the valve out. Easier said than done. <clears throat> Here we go. So the middle comes out of the valve. Let's keep that safe. Then you want half half a bottle of this per tire comes with this little straw. Let's fit that over there. And then just squeeze it in. Ah, remembering to take the seal off, of course. Da, 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 da. Talk amongst yourselves. You can use this stuff if you actually had a puncher and carry it with you and put it in at the side of the road, but who wants to be doing that? It's better to prevent it. Right, so I've got half a tube of the slime in the tube, put the tube in the tyre. Um, on most tyres, I'm saying this if you've never done a puncher before, but you know somebody, somebody out there has never done this. Uh, somewhere around the outside of the tyre, it'll have a little arrow and probably the word direction. Goes to, obvious, make sure that's the direction it's going in, like when you're on the bike. So let's hope this goes back on as easy as it came off. So line up the, the valve move the hole and then hopefully it will just pop on
that's halfway on. And then the thing to do is just make sure you don't pinch the, the inner tube between the tire and the, and the wheel. So. Just tying it a little bit. Yeah, that's looking good. Obviously, because this is the wheel still connected to the rest of the bike, it's not as easy as on a normal bike where you can take the wheel, put it on the bench, take your time, have a clear space to work. But, you know, this is what'll happen if you get a puncture at the side of the road. And I must say, it's flipping easy. Look at that, job done. So I'll stick a bit of air in and we're good to go. Uh, right, so that's the tyre on. One thing to note, um, because the tyre is quite a loose fit on the rim, as you saw it was really easy to get on and off, just when you're putting it back on, just be double careful to make sure that the, the tyre fits over the rim. Because what I was doing was I was pumping it up, one bit popped off and then it started to come off on the other side. So just make sure, just pump it up a little bit at a time, make sure it's staying on and it's straight all the way around. Good to go. All right, next job, disc off uh, and get the new one up. Right, should be simple as undo these six um, Allen key type screws, take the disc off, put the other one on. That's the theory, here it goes. Uh, oh yeah, you can just see it now. Very slightly, you, you won't see it on the camera, but it's got a little ripple in the middle of it, which is why it was uh, really hard to get it adjusted. So, on with the hopefully better one from Shimano. Shiny new thing and comes with screws and maybe I'll see it yet, but um, it's got washers in it that hopefully stop them from shaking loose. I'm hoping these screws are the same size as the ones that came out. We shall see. There's an old one. The new one's slightly longer. Yeah, you're never going to see that. Old and new. But a nice touch. The new ones come with a little bit of thread locking sealant stuff on it. That's a nice, nice little bonus. Yeah, it seems to be the same thread, all right. So, on the disc, same as the tyre, it's got an arrow somewhere showing the rotation. That's it, it's on there. It's better look for it. Uh, right, which way around? <laughs> I'm confusing myself. Uh, anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. All right. Is 
So this is the, the little washer thing they supply. Obviously, so every, every two uh, screws you put in holds this on. And it's got a little tiny tag on it that helps stop the screw from coming undone. Clever little thing. Now really you're supposed to use a torque wrench for torquing these up, uh, but I haven't got one. So... And there are difference. Ah, oh, there are torques fitting. Okay, they're not an Allen, Allen key, they're a torque fit. Uh, which could be a nuisance if you haven't got one. Yeah, I didn't notice that before. The, uh, the screws take a T25 torque bit. It's like a star shaped thing, I've not seen one before. Um, really useful to add, there's, there's several of these screws on, on most bikes nowadays. Um, so if you haven't got one, stick one in your toolkit. So just stand them up loose, you know, sort of finger tight kind of thing with this. Because I don't want to strip them, the, the threads are so tiny, you over tighten them, you ruin the wheel basically. Um, back in a minute I'm just going to get a, a socket that will fit that, and just do them up by hand. So just put the T25 bit in a, it's actually a quarter inch socket. Um, I mean, if you've got a proper one of these or a multi-tool with one of these on, it'd be easier. And then I'm just going to do these up by hand. Like I say, you're supposed to use a torque wrench, but hopefully I won't overdo it. And you're supposed to do these up sort of diagonally. So you don't sort of tighten up one side and not the other and get it all warped and that sort of thing. So if like me you haven't got a torque wrench just do this really gently. Don't be tempted to give it that one last little twist because it will just take the threads out. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to get back on the bike now. Um, and then put the caliper on. So, uh, oh, that was a bit fiddly. So I've got the the uh, axle nuts and washers on, just finger tight. Put it back up on its wheel so there's a bit of weight on it, so it sits up into the groove. But on each side, you've got a washer which has got a little piece sticking out which locates in the, the U-shaped groove at the bottom of this um, sort of fork if you like um, and that just keeps the, the axle located so it doesn't spin round um, that was a bit fiddly to get in but not, not the worst job I've ever done so now I've got to tighten these two nuts up making sure that the axle's tight inside the uh, frame. I never know the words for these things. I'm so hungry. Doesn't help. Right, just pull that up. Pulling the wheel up into the frame now. Just a few turns that side, but still leave it a little bit loose. And then make sure this side's tight up in the frame as well. Yeah, that's good. So, so far, been a bad job. 
no major issues. All right, that's tight. Other side's tight. Chain's back on. I'll put some more cable ties on the wires a bit later on. Got this little protective sleeve goes over the, the nut here. Right, I'm in a better mood now because I've had my dinner. So all that's left now is to put the, the caliper on. <clears throat> Which should be pretty straightforward. Oh look, instructions. Uh, la 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 yeah. Right. done one of these before so hopefully all will be well that's a tidy looking little bit of kit very smart the bracket off the old one. I don't know if you can see up that close on a little waxing camera. We've got a little domed washer and then a convex, yeah that's the word, a convex one. So they slide around between the bracket and the caliper so you can get it adjusted and lined up just right. As you can see there, so it wobbles around a little bit. So before you tighten it up, you can uh, get it adjusted. on back to front. No, that is right. So these ones come with the, the brake pads already in them. Ah, they're very, very easy to change. You can see there's a split pin there. Just get some pliers, squeeze that, pull it out, pins drop out, the uh, pads drop out rather. And then put the other ones in. <clears throat> Just loosening off the pads. So on the this is the back of the caliper. You can see our pad in clockwise, so tight. So as your pads wear out, you tighten that up with a Allen key, and that brings a little bit more of the pad that way towards the disc. This is the cable adjusting screw. Was there okay. go. Yes. And that doesn't seem to want to go over the cable. Yeah, the hole in there is just a little bit too small for this particular cable. So 
As it's only an adjuster, I'll just use the one off the old one. A bit different, but at least it fits. So I'm hoping that will fit in the same hole. You'll see. So that's the clamp for the cable that fits underneath this little washer. Just done that up a little bit. It's not, not really gripping it yet. <clears throat> and now to adjust it. Which is always the fiddly bit. So <clears throat> that's the job done for now. Uh, it's a bit of a faff, just my fault because I don't really know what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm doing. But it's all working lovely now. Um, I'll take it out for a test drive, but I'm sure that's a load better. It just sounds better, it's smoother. Um, it's our wedding anniversary tomorrow. And to celebrate, we're going along Waskily Way. In North Pennines up near Stanhop. Um, so I shall record that and see how these brakes are. But uh, yeah, hope you found it vaguely interesting and possibly a bit useful. And uh, I'll see you in the next rambling video. It's all right. <laughs>